Define and describe what autism is. I mean, autism is a neurological disorder where there's differences in the development of the brain. It ranges all the way from a child that's going to remain nonverbal for the rest of his life with a lot of handicaps up to geniuses, uh, you know, out Silicon Valley that do computer things, Tesla who invented the power plant in a lot of school systems today. Einstein would be diagnosed with some kind of autism problem, no speech until age three. You know, a little bit of the autism trait, you might get a genius. He's not very social. Yeah. You know, if you've seen that social network movie, uh, that's a very good example of Asperger's, which is mild autism. You think that, Mark Zuckerberg, is that? If that movie shows him accurately, I also read the book, if it shows him accurately, it is. And one of the things about being an autistic person, you've got to learn social rules by being taught. And the thing is, you always keep growing. And I hope that uh, Mr. Zuckerberg gets good advice on how to invest his money into socially good things. I was very pleased to find out about the donation he did to the school. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting you say that you have to learn social things by being taught. You have taught. to learn that. How old were you when you started to realize that you had to learn this? Well, you see, in the 50s, social rules were pounded into kids. And I'm seeing a lot of kids on the mild end of the spectrum today having more problems today than not getting jobs. You know, because in the 50s, they pounded things into you, like saying please and thank you. You don't push in line. You know, learn how to take turns. you got to be a good sport. You know, today we got TV shows uh, teaching people that, you know, you kick the week off the show. Yeah. You don't work the, on helping the week. That's so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, what do you I think? I absolutely despise those shows do you because have... they teach the wrong values. They're, but they're so fascinating to people. Why do you think that is? Well, I don't watch them. I think they're just horrid. Mm -hmm. And, and, I don't, and I've only watched them enough to learn about them. I absolutely hate them. Because what happened to the values of helping the weak? I mean, I grew up in an era where Roy Rogers rules for living. And yeah. you look them up on the Internet, and they're good <laughs> rules. Things like you protect the weak, you know, you're polite, you're neat and clean, you're kind to animals. Those are part of the Roy Rogers rules for living. Yeah, well, the animals one you certainly took to heart, didn't you? Well, I've been working with improving, uh, you know, handling of animals for a long time because one thing I'm interested in is we've got to work on doing things to make real improvements on the ground. How did you get connected to animals? I mean you seem to... You, well you... when I was in high school um, we had horses there. I loved riding and horses. Well, I was like absolute horse nut and then when I went out to Arizona my aunt's ranch, I watched cattle going in the squeeze chute and the cattle they put in the squeeze chute to get their vaccinations. And that's shown in the movie. And it's a metal stall, and it kind of squeezes them up each side. And I noticed that some of the cattle just kind of relaxed. So I went and tried out the squeeze chute, and it calmed down my nerves. You see, there's a number of kids on the autism spectrum that will seek deep pressure on wide areas of their body, and it will calm them down. So, and so you... And, of course, I got fixated on the squeeze chute. So then I had to go to every feed yard in Arizona to learn about squeeze chutes, and that, then it got helped get the interest in cattle going. You know, this brings up another thing. You take the fixation and you broaden it out. You know, I had to learn a lot of other things about cattle handling, about design of facilities. You know, half of the cattle in North America, including half the cattle here in Canada, are handled in a piece of equipment I designed called mm -hmm. a center track restrainer system. How does that make you feel? That makes me feel really good. Yeah. It's like it... Is it... Was there ever any part of you that wanted to prove that you could do this? There was definitely a part of me in my early 20s where I wanted to prove to people I wasn't stupid. Right. That was a very big thing. Did and people after, call you stupid? Like how did they Well, a lot of people thought I was a stupid retard that couldn't do anything. And when that dip vat got built and they said it was a masterpiece, and that did happen, and the yeah. thing with the metal plate put it in there, that happened. All things that you designed and arranged, that, right? That all the, everything, all the design stuff was accurate. Now, the movie showed them wrecking my dip vat, putting a metal plate in there. That was taken out and fixed. Mm -hmm. And I went on <laughs> to build a whole bunch more of those, and, and that's how my design business got started.